Howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our fly tying tutorials. Today, uh, since it's cold outside, it's uh, this early December here in Central Ohio, uh, 2018 I think. Uh, so I'm going to tie a warm water fly just to kind of make you feel warm and fuzzy inside. But this is a fly, uh, I'll give you a little history on, on what we're going to do here today. This is a fly that was shown to us here at the shop, I'm gonna say 22 years ago, something like that. Um, and it was called McCabe's Crayfish. And I'm sure we'll show you a close up, but I, I dug one out of my, uh, my carp box uh, last night uh, to show y'all. And we used to have these commercially tied here for the shop and uh, the company we were dealing with was no longer able to tie them to our specs, so it's had a little time off. But uh, this, uh, uh, we'll probably bring it back and maybe in this new version. But anyways, uh, a gentleman by the name of George McCabe, he's up in the Cleveland, Ohio area, and he originally developed this fly for carp. Uh, in fact, this fly was featured in the Carpin video Another one of our favorite crayfish patterns is McCabe's crayfish. George McCabe is a legendary carp fisherman from northern Ohio, and he supposedly developed this fly specifically for carpin. If you click right there, you can watch carpin, and you'll see McCabe's crayfish in there. But we sold this fly for years. It's been a favorite crayfish pattern of many around here. Um, but what I've done is, I think you've heard me say this before, I don't really invent things when it comes to fly tying. I steal things, basically, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, uh, I, I just kind of looked at, at George's fly, which, by the way, George, hey George, how you doing? I just actually had dinner with him uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but he's still around and still fishing with his bamboo rods for carp. Um, but a uh, fantastic fly pattern. But just as we as fly tires do, I kind of took this and tweaked it a little bit, uh, added some more modern materials, and I think I came up with a pretty cool looking fly. So anyways, let's jump right in and tie this, we'll call it the uh, uh, McCabe's Plus. McCabe's Plus Crayfish, that's what we're calling it. So uh, I, I start off with a, uh, I'm tying these on a number six hook. I tied a bunch for smallmouth this year. If you were tying them for carp, I might go to an eight. Uh, but I tie these on a number, uh, hold on. Sure enough, number six, and this is a two X. Uh, in this case, I'm using the, uh, the Umpqua U series hooks, and this is the U103, although you can use any two X or three X for that matter, nymph hook, doesn't matter. But um, uh, I, I tie quite a few of these, and these Umkwa U series hooks are fine for what I'm doing. So insert the hook into the vise, and this is something you've maybe seen me do before, but before I put the thread on, I'm going to score just a little bit with my file. And I'm doing it in this case we're just behind the eye, just a little bit, because the first thing I'm going to do on this hook is I'm going to add uh, the shrimp and craw tail, shrimp and cray tail, excuse me, from Fiskel. Uh, George McCabe had <clears throat> ingeniously flattened out a set of lead dumbbell eyes to kind of imitate that fan tail of the crawfish and also give it weight. Well, I, I just saw these shrimp and cray tails. I've used them on some shrimp patterns for bonefish. Uh, but I thought, hey, man, that would be pretty cool uh, to put on a crayfish pattern. Of course, on um, Flyman Fishing Company, if you follow them on social media, uh, you'll, see, you'll see these things in use, and they're really pretty cool. So I'm going to start my thread, and I'm using, doesn't really matter, your thread. As you know, I'm not a thread guy. I'm using the Ultra Thread 70. I'll go ahead and cover the hook shank just because... I'm a little retentive about that. And then I'm going to wrap my thread back up to just behind the eye of the hook. And I'm going to take this. Um, this is the shrimp and cray tail. It's in the gold color. And this is the large size. Okay. Now I'm going to put this right on top of the hook shank right behind the eye. Okay. Which is going to cause this fly to ride hook up 
which as we know we want all crayfish to ride hook up and just lash it down you got to get this pretty good I'll get one good coating of thread on there I'll put a wrap in front of it and then just keep wrapping and then just keep wrapping and then I'm going to take some super glue of course I've kind of been liking although I am a Zappa Gap fan kind of been liking this uh, Loctite stuff I like it because of the applicator bottle I don't think it necessarily does a better job than Zappa Gap but the applicator bottle you just squeeze on the sides and it puts out just the right amount so I'm going to get quite a bit of super glue on there. Okay, so I'm getting a bunch of wraps of thread over that super glue. And then what I'm going to do is just behind this, it's, it's pretty bulky. Okay, but it's, on, it's already on there pretty well. Now, <clears throat> just behind the tie-in point on that shrimp and cray tail, I kind of build up a ramp behind it. And then I am also going to take about four or five turns of lead wire right behind it because we do want this to be a fairly heavy fly. Um, we want it to get right down to the bottom because carp or smallmouth don't eat crayfish on the surface usually. Okay, so that kind of helps me <clears throat> again. I put that over top of that little ramp so it kind of builds up to and we don't have a, a cliff there that my, t my materials have to go over and I uh, in fact that's five wraps of 0 .030 lead which is just going to add a little more weight to this fly. And now I'll build up a little bit of thread ramp behind those lead wraps. So preliminary step there, get that tail on there first, and then we're going to start working on the tail, which is oddly enough of this crayfish pattern, actually the head. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do um, is, is kind of build up this tail here, which oddly enough is the head of the crawfish. Uh, and we're going to use moose, uh, I'm not sure what this is, moose mane or moose tail, either one will work. Um, I just usually grab about three or four strands of this and you're just going to tie it in. We're not even going to measure it all that much. I probably want it to be a little bit longer than the body, maybe. Yeah, I would say about a hook shank and a half is usually what I want this to be. <clears throat> and again, I'm not real technical about this. I think there's about four or five strands there. <clears throat> there's a couple short ones in there too. That's okay. And you lash that in. Of course, wrapping over the butts to secure it. And wrap your thread back to where it's hanging over the barb as we always do. Um, I was using uh, speckled rubber legs. And I switched over to this, I think it's called uh, either Life Flex or Flexi Floss or Sexy Floss. Um, I don't have the package right here. I'm sure we'll show you a picture of it. I think it's sex, Speckled Sexy Floss. We get this from Montana Fly Company. Of course, you can get it on MadRiverOutfitters.com. I tie in three strands of that and I make it just slightly shorter than the moose. Just slightly shorter. I can trim it so I get the perfect tie in. And then I just wrap over those butts and wind up again with the thread right back at the bend so it's hanging over the bar. So I've got four or five strands of the moose mane or moose tail in there. I've got some of the sexy floss. 
And now <clears throat> I'm going to take a little bit of rabbit strip. I'm using here the hairline magnums. Uh, I use a lot of magnum rabbit strips on streamers. Um, and it just I, I get more hair, obviously, on the magnum. But either one, a regular zonker strip, a magnum. And I grab just a little bunch, a little tuft of that rabbit. In fact, that might be a little too much. And now we're going to we're going to just put this on top as a little short stubby tail call it but it winds up being um, the I think maybe a carapace I don't know if that's a word but we're going to call this a carapace it's that little nosy thing that's right in front of a crawfish's eyes um, and we're just going to tie that right in I've already trimmed it so that the butts are the proper length that should kind of meet up with the wraps of lead wire and bada book bada bing there's that part <clears throat> so we've got the moose we've got the sexy floss we've got a little tuft of rabbit strip for the carapace <clears throat> and now everybody's favorite material some chenille Okay. Now this is, uh, I don't want to call this tricky because it's not. If I can do it, you can do it. But I'm going to go ahead and grab quite a bit of chenille. <clears throat> and I'm going to tie this in right at the rear of the hook. Now what we're going to do is, uh, I usually, when I'm tying in chenille, I'll usually take my fingernails and pull off the fuzzy stuff and get to that cotton core. I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> on this because I want the bulk of the chenille and what it's going to do is kind of build up some bulk so when I wrap this it, uh, it gives me a fatter head on this guy and allows me some semblance of taper as we're working back down the fly. So I'm going to tie that in and again the tie-in should go from the bend right to about the end of your lead wraps. Okay so that worked out perfectly for me for a change. Make sure you don't get that carapace. You don't want to mix your carapace and your head. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to start wrapping this chenille. Again, making sure you don't mess up the that beautiful tail you just tied. And I don't know, I might get about three or four wraps, something like that. I might put one extra there over the top. And there we go. So you just kind of built up um, somewhat of a ball. We'll call that somewhat of an oval shape there. Okay. And I tie this, tie off this chenille so that it's right on top of the hook shank okay because now i'm going to flip this over in my vise okay so it's a little bit of a, a pain in the rear end <clears throat> with that chenille hanging there uh, but you'll get over it <clears throat> now we're going to make the claws and the claws are made out of squirrel tail. This is a red fox squirrel tail. And I grab the scientific amount of a bunch. Um, I, like, I like fat clawed crayfish. Just like when I go to Red Lobster, I like the, the, the bigger claws, the better. I think the fish think the same way, of course. And grab that, trim it, and you're just gonna lay it along the side there and then I'm, I'm using <clears throat> kind of a, a pinch method, but along the side, which secures those legs right there along the side. Excuse me, I said legs, claws. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap over the butts of that, and that way those are nice and secure in there. Uh, after I get the second one in, I might even put uh, a couple of drops of super glue there. Just helps keep those claws from, from pulling out on you. Grab uh, approximately the same amount. Uh, let's go a little bit less. 
I don't bother stacking these. You, you could if you wanted. I kind of measure it to where it's about even with the other. Measure it so that you're going to get the proper tie-in amount. And wrap over those butts. And then wrap all the way back to your tie-in point, which is just at the base of the ball of chenille. And now I can wrap back just a little bit further. And as I do that, it's going to flare those claws out just a little bit more. And there we go. So now your claws are on. Okay. So let's, let's put some uh, little beady eyes on there. This is one thing that the original didn't have. Of course, you, you can leave this out, but I just think it looks cool. And when... Uh, I do have a few of these for sale here in the shop, and when people look at them, they, they make eye contact with it, they fall in love with the fly, and they fish it with confidence. But these are the uh, Enrico Puglisi uh, crab and shrimp eyes. They're stupidly expensive. I, I shouldn't put it on this fly, but I do. I think it looks pretty cool. So <clears throat> the shrimp and crab eyes is just basically burned monofilament. And I'm just going to lay one on the side. Now the placement, you're going right over top of the claws, okay? And then um, I want these eyes to be about even, say, with the bend of the hook, all right? And I'm just going to tie that in there. And they're kind of going right over top of that ball of chenille. That, that ball that you, of chenille that you built back there helps you flare those claws out and then kind of helps you flare these legs up, um, trying to keep them pretty even. You don't want a cross-eyed crayfish. And just tie them in. There you go. Bada bing. Trim that and now we'll pull out the Loctite and I'll lock those down, get a little bit into the butts of the squirrel tail. <clears throat> a few security wraps, smooth things out a little bit. And now, now he's got eyes and he's looking up at you saying, Dad, take me fishing. Okay. We're going to grab a uh, brown rooster saddle feather, grizzly, and I'd say medium sized. And I'm going to tie this feather in by the butt, okay? We want to have some, again, semblance of taper. That crawfish is going to be tapered down to his tail. And of course, this is the tail. So I'll just tie it in by the butt so that my, my hackle wraps are thicker towards the head of this fly, which is actually the, the tail of this fly, and then tapers as I come. I'll strip off a bunch of the webby stuff. There, I just broke it, which is fine because I still have plenty of of stem there to tie that feather in. Nothing overly technical. From here on out, it's more or less a woolly bugger. Okay, tie my stem in. Should be enough of the, the wet glue to help secure that stem in. And now I'm gonna wrap my thread forward to the eye of the hook. Okay, I'm gonna wrap my chenille. And again, you should have a little semblance of taper there that the chenille is going over. And I'm going to tie that chenille off just behind the eye of the fly. And come in with my scissor points. Trim it off. And 
and then you're going to wrap your hackle feather. I've got a couple strays in there. I might have to come and clean it up a little bit, but that's okay. And I should, I should have my hackle pliers. Forgive me, but I think I left them at home. Because I didn't have my hackle pliers, they're either over in my office or they're at home. I apologize. I was <clears throat> not as professional as I should have been, but it worked out. I'm going to kind of just pull the hackle out of the way to get some security wraps. Um, it's all kind of jammed up against that tail. So I just came in and trimmed a few of those stray hackle fibers out of there. This doesn't need to be overly fancy. You're just creating an impression of the legs and his abdomen. And then that's it, friends. I'm going to whip finish this, which I do with my fingers, especially on a fly like this. I'll go one. I'll go two. <clears throat> broke the thread there but that's fine as long as you had a good knot in there <clears throat> and that is a fly uh, that again we've been using for years McCabe's crayfish and we're gonna call this variation of it the McCabe's plus uh, we've changed the tail uh, we've added a little bit of bling here on the front on the nose of the crayfish we added the, the carapace we added the eyes to it but otherwise uh, the foundation of that fly is the same that George McCabe did many years ago so um, there you have it I'm, I'm not sure whether these are for sale on madriveroutfitters.com if you don't find them there uh, you can call me here at the shop I'll tie some for you and send them out to you but anyways uh, give that fly a try it's, it's great, pretty easy to tie, uh, works on carp, works on smallmouth, um, McCabe's plus crayfish. So there you go, friends. As always, thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to matteroveroutfitters.com. You can buy everything here, which helps us afford to continue making these videos. We appreciate you watching. As always, stay tuned. A lot more coming. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.